This is our model for Baxter, the longest haircut in the Crucial collection. Create a low horseshoe-shaped parting to keep maximum length and weight at the top of the head. Adjust the parting from side to side if necessary. Reduce any extreme length prior to setting in your design panel if necessary. Establish the basic head shape with clipper over comb in a slight graduated angle. Cut across the comb to set in the desired length. Use fanning over comb to blend. Anchor the clipper comb very lightly at the hairline. The comb remains suspended off of the head in order to maintain scalp coverage. Resolve the entire panel from hairline to horseshoe-shaped parting. The detail at the end is for lightly adjusting the taper with either razor, shear over comb, or light clipper work. Use forced placement behind the ear to remove length. Find the guide at the top of the comb. Cut from hairline to the guide. This will rough in a visual guide at the hairline and a technical guide behind the ear. Use visual assessment and the awareness of the guide above and cut the shape with a lean and tall feel. Remember to maintain scalp coverage while creating a high taper. High tapers remain above the widest point of the head. Stay along the head for the majority of the vertical panel. Before beginning the cutting process, it is essential to assess the head shape for any obstacles that you may see. Cut as flat a shape as possible with graduation toward the crown. Cut across the comb for quick bulk removal and immediate weight placement. Place the side of the clipper blade against the base of the comb, maintaining contact with the comb. Swiftly move the clipper across the comb, the teeth of the blade remaining perpendicular to the teeth of the comb. Take many passes across the comb as you move up the panel. Use fanning over comb for blending established weight. This is a refining technique for an area previously cut, a method that will not allow you to push great amounts of hair. Propel the action of the clipper from the wrist. Work the blade swiftly over the comb in a vertical fanning motion. Holding the comb in a C shape is an essential technique for proper clipper work. Place your thumb at the base of the comb with the teeth facing up. Place your index finger at the top of the teeth. This position allows you to pivot the comb from your wrist or with your fingers. Use this pivot for controlling the hair as you comb against gravity. This position also allows you to flip the comb and literally comb the hair with gravity when cutting in basic shape. Combing this particular length of hair and controlling it to be cut with a clipper is difficult. The C-shape allows you to move the comb and pick up the hair from below and comb it from above. If a longer length is too difficult to control, simply do a quick length removal, return to the overall shape, and connect to the guide. Identify the guide at the edge of the comb. Enter the clipper on the guide and cut across the comb. Once the angle of the comb is set, follow up the entire panel while taking care to maintain shape. Point the teeth of the comb to where the weight rests and let the comb hold that position. Every few panels, look at the interior lengths to make sure the weight is not falling due to extra length. Use forced placement and low graduation at the hairline around the ear. The hairlines for Crucial are classic tapers that fit into a natural hairline. The degree of scalp exposure at the hairline should remain moderate and display elements of the natural growth. We will finish this haircut in step 5 with razor over comb. Shear over comb or additional clipper work are also an option. With Crucial, use your judgment when deciding which finish is best for the conditions of both the hair and hairline. Body position and arm strength are very important when cutting the hair with a clipper. When the clipper touches the comb without proper stability, it can force the comb into the shape of the haircut. This would create indentations that would change the surface area of the haircut. To prevent this, always have tension in the arm holding the comb. This provides a stable foundation for the clipper to cut on. 
Create a T-shaped parting with the side-to-side -side part pointing to where you want the disconnection to begin. This is where the head turns from the back to the side. The idea of the T-part pointing to the disconnection area is a consistent application in the entire Crucial collection. Use horizontal sections in the transition area to create length and weight at both the transition and top of the head. Horizontal sections leave a greater degree of bulk, filling in the head shape as the head rounds to the top. Connect to the guide under the section at the very back of the head, behind the T-parting. Slide cut the hair, directing up. The point of entry begins at the guide. The hair is cut with a shallow to moderate depth. Some overhang will exist, as the point of entry is at the guide below. Use a razor to diffuse the ends of the hair and break up any weight existing below the crown. Section off this transition from a narrow top, zone 4. Then, section horizontally on the side from the T-parting to the front hairline. Slide cut with the razor and connect to the guide just behind the T-parting. Direct the hair forward and cut the length so it rests above the ear. Use a simple angle and moderate to shallow depth. The depth will be determined by the density of hair. Shallow depth for less density, more depth for greater density. You can identify the guide at the starting point behind the ear, although you will immediately abandon the guide from zone two and build length toward the front. Make sure the length rests above the ear and is longer toward the front before moving up the head to zone four. Cut each section with low elevation. This will leave maximum weight at the side. This degree of elevation can make or break this haircut. Most likely, the low elevation will be slight. Be careful not to drag the section too low. The final look of Baxter is a lean and fitted perimeter with a flat and slightly graduated interior. The top will offer connection over the crown moving into disconnection from the back to the front. The top is heavy and falls wide to the front. The initial low horseshoe-shaped parting plays a role in the proper construction of this haircut. This allows us to transition with horizontal sections and let the weight fall below the round of the head. If the horseshoe parting were higher, the weight would sit higher up the head like a beret. Baxter is a rendition of a bowl cut with the capability of dual styling. On the opposite side of the head, connect to the T-parting at the back of the head and disconnect toward the front, matching length and weight as you work up the head. The entry of the razor should mimic the direction forward. Depths may change from the opposite side if the density from one side to the other is different. Use your visual assessment for balance to make the proper decisions. For the top, use rotating sections whose point of rotation is in front of the crown. Connect to a guide at the crown and cut to a longer length at the front. Pull each section to a stationary guide at the center top. Starting in the center, slide cut forward with moderate depth. Leave enough length so it falls to gravity, but short enough that it adds a long layered result to the hair previously cut at the transition. If the front allows, make sure the length falls below the eyes and is cut to leave weight at the forehead. The result may have a slight amount of overhang at the crown area due to the initial separation of zone four. You may need to connect length as an isolated detail element after cutting the top. Use rotating sections and connect to the stationary guide first. The sections rotate from the crown area toward the temple. This sectioning, paired with the stationary guide, will leave more weight toward the recession area where you may need more coverage. The front should result in a very long and heavy bowl-shaped finish. 
Rotating sections are not a typical application for men's work. A rotating section pattern is the preferred choice for the client with recessive qualities or to simply leave weight. This sectioning allows for overdirection away from the recession area. It is easy to make subtle adjustments in overdirection and cutting angle. It is reserved for a situation such as this. You will find us using this for collection work that has unique shape toward the front and for thinning haircuts in which you want to reserve length at the top. When working with a stationary guide, you can take extremely wide sections. A stationary guide is the result when all the hair is directed onto a guide that remains at one specific area of the head. This offers an extreme increase in length away from the guide. Just make sure that you are in control of the hair and can identify the guide. The hair is cut at the same location and basic length when working with stationary guides. Theoretically, we could cut the entire top in one section, although with this amount of hair, it would be very difficult to control. Cut the length at the front of the head, connecting to the guide from the transition at zone 3. You will find this guide at the corner of the brow. The final result is a bowl shape at the center of the eye or longer. Cut with a razor to add a slightly broken and bent edge. Keep the depth of the cutting action shallow. Separation is not a desired result for the front. Cut the hair as dry as possible. The greater the amount of water weight, the more likely the hair will shrink. Use water only to offer just enough control that you can cut cleanly. With this much density, you will need to use tension on the section. Consider this and cut at a length longer than desired, as the hair will shrink up to the desired area. Strengthen the outline shape with a shear. Use point cutting and flat cutting to remove the shattered ends and intensify the outline. Remove any unwanted length at this time if it does not style well into shape. Use American Crew Moisturizing Shave Cream for normal to coarse beard types to shave the unwanted hair below the taper. Wet the area and cover with shave cream. Moisturizing shave cream is recommended for skin that requires extra hydration and for those who want to see exactly where they have shaved. Make sure the razor enters the hair below the taper. For a more natural, grown-out hairline, enter the teeth of the razor into the tapered area and simply remove the unwanted neck hair. The neck shave is a great way to finish any and all haircuts on men. It is important that you do not create a new edge with the razor. If a blocked off line shows, return with razor over comb in that area. If the broken hairline and the elongated taper are not functional, use the clipper and remove the lowest hairline with a more fitted taper. Here, razor over comb is used to maintain a very subtle element of a broken texture. This is an option when an elongated low taper is the desired result. Shear over comb would refine the taper even more tightly with a clean and fitted result. A clipper would remove and slightly shrink the tapered area. Return to the entire hairline and blend into a visually balanced perimeter regardless of which technique is chosen.
For finish option number one, use American Crew Boost Cream to offer volume and thickness to this bowl-shaped style. Apply a generous amount of product to your hands and work evenly throughout towel dry hair. For completely dry hair, a little goes a long way. Work Boost Cream into the entire haircut from scalp to ends. Use a Denman brush to smooth the hair around the head. Here, we are applying a technique in which we use the roundness of the head to create a round finish. Wrap the hair around the head with the brush and the blow dryer. Use the Denman, section by section, to smooth the hair and create a strong and solid front hairline. Watch the ends of the hair so they work through to an even line on the base of the brush. Use the brush to grab and to elevate the sections at the top for added volume. The full finish is a must for this dapper style. For finish option number two, Use American Crew Alternator for a flexible hold and separation for this casual floppy finish. Alternator offers a dual styling capability without a second product application. Towel dry the hair well to remove the majority of the water from the hair. Spray on alternator, misting inside the shape. Rough dry to remove more moisture and set the product into the hair. Use the Mason Pearson to create wave and force movement. Bend the hair with the brush in random sections. Use the brush and dryer to elevate. Push to elevate and force wave in the front for a casual and floppy finish. Create an elevation off of the forehead for a greater change from finish option number one. As the hair dries, watch the shape develop. The desired result is a random, loose, and wavy texture at the front that cannot completely fight gravity. Alternator is a flexible hold that allows you to restyle your hair later without having to add more product. This can offer ever-changing style with one product application. 